we are a member of the JCP uh, or Java ME Executive Committee, and we are a member of the different JSRs as the JCP Committee as well. And uh, we also won the 2006 JCP uh, Member of the Year Award. So our commitment to Java is quite high or really high at Sony Ericsson. It is in the top focus of Sony Ericsson. Looking at what happened in 2003 when we launched our first Java device, which was the T610, then uh, Java was uh, quite bad at Sony Ericsson. We, uh, we received the worst results of all different uh, manufacturers out there around Java. And uh, then we thought, OK, what is wrong here? Because the first game I ever saw on a device was a very simple game. It was a drag racing game where uh, you could only see the steering wheel and you had two buttons to press uh, in order to hit the different uh, gears that were supposed to shift. So uh, then we thought Java was this kind of platform but uh, and MoFun was the gaming platform by that time for us at Sony Ericsson. But when we then saw uh, Nokia devices coming out with uh, games that were as good as the MoFun games or even better, we thought, oh, we have probably done something uh, wrong here with our Java platform because... It was the, the lack of performance and these kind of things that was uh, really bad at our devices. And uh, then we started looking more and more into what Nokia have done that is really good. And what they had done was they had uh, implemented something called Nokia UI API. And that we didn't find out until we started buying, I don't know how many games we bought. We bought uh, tons of games and we had cooperations with gaming developers. So they send in a lot of games to us as well. And when we analyzed all these games, we found out that they had this Nokia UI API. Uh, I think it was, uh, I did a survey on that. And I think it was almost 80% uh, or even 90% of all the games used Nokia UI APIs in the early days of 2003. And uh, because they used this API, they could not run on our devices either. So uh, that became a big focus of the Sony Ericsson. Uh, it was not that we needed to be compliant with uh, the TCK and MIDP anymore. We, we needed to be compliant with what's out there on the market. And we all know that Nokia is a big player around this. So we added a Nokia UI API. And in uh, 2004, in the K700, um, we saw that we're going from the worst to be on, actually on the top of the uh, manufacturers around Java here. And uh, we also added uh, Mascot 3D API, Mascot Capture 3D API, which uh, we were the first vendor to have a, a really great uh, 3D development uh, platform as well. So we saw, for instance, a, a tennis game uh, that we preloaded on our K700 that received uh, excellent reviews. And uh, the performance was great uh, by that time for 3D games as well. So uh, we have done quite a lot around uh, Java since 2003 and then come out to 2004. And that, cons uh, that history then continued over time. So in, in 2005, we saw that oh, we, now we have a real big momentum around uh, Java and games. So then uh, we continued with a device called W550. And this W550 was a gaming device with A and B buttons. I don't know if you all remember that one, but it had A and B buttons and you played in a horizontal mode instead of having uh, in portrait mode while gaming. So uh, then we were at the, we were in the top of the gaming developers as well and we received excellent reviews around the, our performance in our devices then because that was the big shift for us in when we went from the T610 to the K700. Uh, we, we had built up this big bank of, of content. We continued building this over time now. We, we still collect a lot of content. Uh, uh, from the beginning it was mostly games, but the shift we saw in 2006 uh, when we went, if, uh, for instance, that was the K800 device. Then we became more of an application uh, platform where we saw a lot of applications being developed for our phones and uh, for third parties that had a good connections with uh, our customers, the operators, we saw this as being a very important step that we added a multitasking VM, for instance, to run uh, several applications at the same time. So from 2005, we were a gaming platform, and then 2006, we became more of an application platform as well, still continuing with a strong platform around gaming here. So... Uh, 
And then looking at the uh, head there and what happened in 2007, we continued building on the application story and we became MSA compliant in 2007. So uh, that was also a huge step for us. And I mentioned that we had 19 or uh, shipped or announced devices in 2008 now with MSA compliance. So MSA has been really important to us as well to say that we are MSA compliant. And uh, looking at what happened now in 2008 is that uh, Java has become a first-class citizen within Sony Ericsson. Uh, even our native applications is being developed with Java as well. So we have seen this big shift where they started off in the early days with a, a gaming platform that evolved to be even more focused on gaming. And then in 2008 we see that it has become our first-class citizen at Sony Ericsson. Well, a different developer resource that we have, of course, is the SDK that you can download for free. And uh, also, you have a lot of developer guidelines. And there are lots of examples. And as I mentioned, please read the forums and reply to things in the forums or ask new questions in the forums. Because that's uh, how we have seen that we can evolve and get a better relationship with the uh, developers outside. And, we have understood that uh, the third parties are really important. They are key to us. They are the ones that is building up our propositions around our devices with games or applications. I mean, it's, both are uh, as important for us. So uh, I mean, looking at the, the different relationships we have had and uh, who has been really active in the, the developer forums, uh, we can see that the ones that have been active, they are really important to us as well. So uh, quite often when I receive questions from uh, third parties as well, because of that I do quite a lot, I can very easily direct them to the developer world as well. I mean, looking at uh, the questions I get, 80% of them I can answer with, uh, please have a look at the developer guideline at page, I don't know, 79 or something like that for uh, certain information. So the information is there and uh, we see that a lot of people visit these sites often but uh, continue to make it uh, even more often and uh, continue to go to our developer world to find information because uh, it is there. If you have any additional questions um, I will be at the Java forum at developer world. Thank you.